Here's a picture from the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal. It shows two pictures of the Earth and Venus taken from the Moon. It's derived from these two NASA photographs. In his Shifting Stars video, eagle-eyed conspiracy theorist Jarrah White has noticed that if you line up the two Earths as accurately as you can, the two Venuses do not line up. Here you can see what he means. I've drawn circles around the two Venuses, lined up the two Earths, and sure enough the Venuses don't match. Now Venus can't possibly have moved that far in the few seconds between the two pictures. Jarrah White thinks this is evidence that the pictures were faked. But it turns out there is another explanation. Here's a drawing which I derived from one of the pictures. The distance to the camera was chosen to make my Earth and its separation from my Venus look realistic. In addition, the focal length of the lens was set to mimic the camera used on the Moon. I made my Venus larger to make it easier to see and I also gave it crosshairs. Here you can see the photographs superimposed centre for centre with the NASA photograph. The agreement is not perfect, but it's pretty good. Here you see a second photograph of the same drawing. And here it is again, superimposed centre for centre with the second NASA photo. Again, the agreement is not perfect, but it's good enough for us. For convenience, I've taken two crops of these photographs. Here's one, and here's the other. Here I've superimposed the two Venuses as accurately as I can using the crosshairs. But if you examine the two Earths, you find they don't match up at all well. Here I've rotated one of the images around Venus to match the Earths up better, but the match is still not perfect. In the next image you're going to see what happens when I match up the two Earths as accurately as I can. The two Venuses end up mismatched by a surprising amount. If we look at the superimposed NASA photos and then compare with my model, the agreement is almost perfect. Now there is an element of luck in this, because it's harder than you might think to align the two Earths properly, and also we can't be sure the zoom lens on my camera is an accurate mimic of the fixed lens used on the Moon. But the fact that it worked at all is not luck. It happened because most photographs are predictably distorted. Have a look at this simplified drawing of a camera. Notice what happens when you image things that are further and further from the centre of the frame. The distance between the lens and the film increases as you move from the centre, slowly at first and then faster. This means the image is magnified disproportionately as you go from the centre to the edge. Now in one of the pictures, the Earth is very nearly in the middle, but in the other picture, Venus is in the middle and the Earth is off to the bottom right. This means the two cusps are magnified and the right-hand cusp is magnified more than the left-hand cusp and therefore pushed further out. So a crescent that starts out this shape gets distorted to be something like this, grossly exaggerating. If you try and match them up now, you'll find they're not a very good match. But if you rotate one of them, you get a slightly better match. This means the camera has distorted the image so that one of the crescents looks like it's rotated. So, if you try to match the two crescents, everything else in the images will be rotated until they don't match. But the explanation is not the important bit. The important bit is that I was able to duplicate the jumping Venus effect by taking two pictures of the same drawing, changing only the direction the camera was pointing. So now we've seen the fact that the Earth and Venus in this image and this image do not match is completely explained by the fact that they were taken with the camera pointing in slightly different directions. There's nothing in these images to suggest they were not taken on the Moon and no evidence of a hoax.